So if you're anything like me, you think that career mode is at its best and most fun when you're trying to play it realistically. Not only does it kind of replicate real life better, but also it makes it more challenging. And with that challenging comes more fulfillment when it does end up being successful. What I've got for you today is the ultimate guide to creating the most realistic career mode experience that you possibly can with lots of tips and suggestions for you to alter your career mode to make it as realistic as possible. From gameplay sliders, to tactical approach, to philosophy, to transfers, and a whole lot more, we're covering all the bases today in order to give you the most realistic career mode you can have. So first things first, hello everyone, my name is Ash. On this channel, we cover all things FC24, Football Manager, and a whole lot more. We've got lots of different videos, tactics and sliders, etc., and that's really where I want to start. Your tip number one for the most realistic career mode is sliders. I've got two videos on the channel covering gameplay sliders for both world-class difficulty and legendary difficulty. Because ultimately, you can make your career mode as realistic as you want. If the gameplay isn't fun, if the gameplay isn't enjoyable for you, and it doesn't have that realistic feel, ultimately, that's not going to keep you coming back. With these sliders, yes, they don't completely fix the entire gameplay. No set of sliders can. They do make it more tolerable though, and they do make the gameplay feel ultimately more realistic. And that's what's gonna get you keep coming back and wanting to play more, wanting to continue with this career mode. Those videos have also got realistic gameplay settings as well and other features, rules, etc. So it's not just the gameplay sliders, you're getting the entire basis covered. Second on the list is tactical approach. As I mentioned, we do cover a lot of tactics on this channel and tactical approach is something that should be key to your career mode. You should go into this knowing what your approach is going to be. Are you going to be the sort of manager where attractiveness, attractive football is going to be the most important thing to you? You want to have third by third progressional football, a vertical possession system. Are you going to be someone who wants high tempo, heavy metal football as Jürgen Klopp would call it? Perhaps you're going to go the other way. You want to be a defensive manager who wants to grind out results. You want to keep clean sheets. Set pieces are extremely important to you. Whatever it may be, decide on your tactical approach first and try to implement that. It's very easy for us as FIFA players to ultimately start with this and then ultimately when they're in the game, just play the generic FIFA gameplay style where we do kick and rush down the wings, we look to hit them on the break all the time and it's constantly really trying to exploit the gameplay. That's all well and good, but ultimately the most fun aspect of career mode for me is deciding on this overall tactical approach and implementing that vision. Even if you're going to be the sort of person who does a journeyman save, you want to move around clubs, you're not stuck into one club, ultimately your principles should follow you around because ultimately every single manager in the world, regardless of if you're Jurgen Klopp, you're Pep Guardiola, Diego Simeone, Jose Mourinho, whilst you may make little tweaks and stuff, your principles, your atti attitude, your approach is going to remain the same. So it should follow you throughout your career mode. And that plays into my third tip, which is your overall philosophy. Decide on what your philosophy is gonna be. Do you want to be the type of manager who instead, results aren't everything you want to develop young players. You want to grow them and nurture them and improve them, sell them on for profit. Because whilst your tactical approach plays a part in your philosophy, it doesn't completely define it. Perhaps you wanna be the sort of person who overachieves with limited resources or you want to go the other way you want to split, spend big money for big signings with high reputation whatever it may be try and decide on that philosophy at the start and stick to it throughout the course of your career mode which also ties in nicely to tip number four and this is where we're going to discuss the transfer market now it's all very well and good me just saying make realistic transfers but what does that really entail there's a lot that goes into that but for one if we revert back to what we've spoken about a minute ago with the tactical vision it's important that you're signing players that fit into that tactical vision and ultimately fit into the ethos for the club now for layman's terms let's take a basic example clubs like ajax or barcelona we know the type of midfielder the type of player that they want technically gifted players physical elements don't contribute to those decisions as much. So a player like Leon Goretzka, for example, a big box-to-box -box midfielder, an engine, a physical dominant player, clubs like Ajax, clubs like Barcelona, they don't really have that sort of central midfielder and they never really have done. It's just not the sort of player that they're going to sign. They prefer the Frankie de Jongs, they prefer the Donny van den Bakes, they prefer the Pedris, the Iniestas, the Xavis, all these guys who aren't physical specimens. They aren't these incredible engines and box-to-box -box fielders. They are, their strengths come in their technical ability and their reading of the game. So bear that in mind. You know, on the other hand, if you're Real Madrid, 
They always want their big name signings, always, regardless, every single year they're looking to bring in guys that are going to fit into that kind of Galacticos model, so to speak. Now, with regards to making signings themselves, the values always come into play and it's very tricky to get that. But there is a decent way you can use it. First things first, it's important to look at historical data and base of transfers on there. Now, let's say you're a Premier League club and you find a homegrown midfielder in the championship, a young one, someone like Jordan James. Now, I promise that there is no biasness here, but there is historical data to go on. Now, career mode would tell you that Jordan James is worth 1.4 million, a measly 1.4 million. However, if we look at historical data, for example, earlier on in the year, Crystal Palace signed Adam Wharton from Blackburn for 18.5 million, rising to in the 20 million pound region. Now, Jordan James is a player who is a midfielder, but he's in a more valuable role. He's the boxer box midfielder, a player who scores goals, which is far more valuable than the deeper midfielder than Adam Wharton is. He also has far more appearances to his belt already, over 100 at club level, on top of being a fully fledged international with already double figures in international caps. So you could look at that and say, well, actually, if Adam Wharton's going for 18.5, rising to 22 million, Jordan James has to be at least matching, but probably beating that price. So it's important to look at that historical real life data and base your fees on that. Yes, you'll probably be paying more than what FIFA is suggesting, but ultimately, that's the perks of the realistic career mode. On top of that, see if you can find any information on release clauses. For example, if you're Chelsea, you're on trying to identify a striker, you hone in on Tammy Abraham, they have a buyback clause available on Tammy Abraham, so you could activate that buyback clause and spend that figure. This is also a great time for me to mention just to look at which club you're selling to try to make it realistic now again there are examples for this if bilbao athletic bilbao coming for your croatian midfielder with their basque only policy reject now ultimately this will have to be down to your discretion a little bit but just try and use a bit of common sense i saw someone on youtube recently who was supposed to be doing a realistic career mode but then sold michael Keane, 30 year old michael Keane, to rb leipzig and i was kind of thinking what are we doing here? RB Leipzig haven't signed a player over 13 years, but all of a sudden they're going to go to an English 30-year-old centre-back who isn't very good from a technical perspective and isn't confident in those progressional possession systems that RB Leipzig like to play? Come on. So ultimately, just take a step back and have a look who you're selling to before you accept the offer. Fifth on this list is the Youth Academy. Now, it's very easy for the Youth Academy to hire three five-star scouts and constantly be getting those 94 overall potential players through the door. However, it's just not likely. Let's take a huge academy, something like Manchester United. Now, Manchester United Academy is huge. The amount of resources being pumped into that on a yearly basis are enormous. It is through the roof. But let's take a look at it and say how many world-class players realistically has the Manchester United Academy produced over the last... 20 years and no we are not counting Marcus Rashford you know so with that in mind to get a 94 overall potential player should be an extremely rare occurrence it should be something that's hard if not almost impossible to do that's why as a result you should be looking at one and two star scouts only in order to make it far more of a challenge for you to get those impressive highly elite youth academy products in the door as i alluded to at the start of the video it makes it more challenging it makes it more fun and fulfilling when you do ultimately get a very promising youth candidate sticking with the youth academy theme i also want to talk about just where you're sending your scouts to always look to scouting countries that realistically that club is going to be scouting in. For example, if you're a championship club, I'm afraid then they don't have youth scouts in Brazil. No matter what people think, they don't have youth scouts dotted all around the world on different continents. Ultimately, they're staying within the UK. Likewise, let's go back to another team we mentioned, Ajax. We know Ajax have Ajax Cape Town, so you could send a scout to South Africa as well as the Netherlands. Ultimately, look on the history of the club and see just where they're getting their youth academy products in the door. Next on the list is the rules. Now, these can be a little bit harder to implement because ultimately FIFA and FC24 isn't the same as Football Manager and it doesn't have it there for you, but it is something you can keep track of if you really want to. First things first, have a look at the likes of FFP and profit and sustainability rules. Ultimately, you can only make a loss of so much. In some leagues, you can only pay a maximum amount of wages as a percentage of your turnover. Ultimately, it's good to just do a quick Google and see what the FFP rules and profit and sustainability rules 
are in the league that you are choosing to do. It is possible to track some of this stuff on FC24 in the finances and office tab, so it is something that you can actually keep on top of. Ultimately, if you have to limit and rein in your spending, that is something that's going to make it more challenging, but again, more fulfilling. The same applies to other rules such as squad registration. For example, in the Champions League, you need to have a minimum of eight homegrown players in your 25-man squad. A lot of leagues, a lot of tournaments these days have those squad registration rules, and so you can also pay attention to that as well. It's good to try and keep in your squad and make it so that you can't just stack up and stock on everyone. And so with that being said, we're going to bring this one to a close. If you've got any suggestions that I didn't mention to make your career mode more realistic, please do let me know in the comment section down below. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload. And until the next one, I will see you soon.